Welcome to It Is What It Is. I'm Shamari. I'm Jean. <laughs> Take two. Okay. So today we are going to be talking about Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. He was born February 28th, 1906 in Brooklyn, New York to Jeannie and Max Siegel. They were Jewish immigrants. He grew up in a crime warden. Williamsburg part of New York that was full of Irish and Italian gangsters which the mob was everywhere I back feel then. like back then but I don't know maybe they weren't they were that stuff's like a good thing about the mob is really back in the day dude you never really knew who was a part of the mob mm -hmm. like in your neighborhood like you would uh, guess like, oh, that fool's fucking gangster. And definitely family members, but it, it branches out. There's a lot of people. Mm hmm You know? A whole bunch of people. Yeah. So, he was the second of five children. He was the oldest, second oldest. I mean, yeah. And he vowed to never be poor. Uh -huh. Like his parents. Like, vowed. He hated it. Yep. Yep. Because their fucking apartment was rat infested. Yeah. Like, all gross. And, like, I've seen the pictures of apartments. Like, not his apartment, but, like... Well, and they're already tiny. Like, the whole yeah. apartment would be this bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking crazy shit. People used to live like that. Anyway. So, he lived in the fat rat, fat rat invested, infested apartment. Jesus. So, lo and behold, he was looking out his window, and he saw all these gangster kids. And he's mm -hmm. like, you know what? That looks like fucking fun. Mm -hmm. So he did. He went outside. He ventured outside. Jumped in or? Mm, I think he committed robberies. I don't know exactly. They never say exactly like what he, he did started. to like quote unquote get in the family. Because mainly because he was a self-made man. Yeah. Like he fucking started his own shit. He really didn't need anybody else. He's like I'll just do it myself. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So he dropped out of high school. And so his first gig was he'd start, he would rob fucking like hot dog carts and like vendor carts in New York, like through Central Park and whatever and Coney Island and shit. And he'd fucking rob them and then he'd go back to them. The next. Yeah. I don't even know if it's the next day. If it's the next day, it just makes the story better. So we'll lie <laughs> and we'll say the next day. He'd go back and be like, so check it out. If you want me to stop robbing you and taking all your shit, if you just pay me this amount, I won't rob you. Like, we'll keep it cool. And I'll make sure nobody else robs you. Mm -hmm. And if somebody else does rob you, they gotta see me. I'll take care of that person, said person. Uh -huh. Mind you, he's like a fucking teenager. Oh. He's just a little guy. Well, he was. I guess he was little. He was, like, known... Well, at the time of his death, he was, like, 5'10", 5'11", I'm 5'5", so... Mm -hmm. Taller, mm -hmm. I guess. Do you use that to his advantage? Intimidating people? No, he was... Dude, that's the thing about gangsters, is, like, you never really had to be, like, oh, let me beat you up to show that I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. It was, like, everybody just knew. Like, <laughs> that dude. <laughs> Hi, sir. Hello. How are you? Yeah. Let me kiss your ass. Even even when he started, just robbing with the, the hot dog cart. He became and... known very, very quickly. Uh-huh. Like, they spotted him and were like, okay, that little guy. He Going got somewhere. He got the, he got the gene of the gangster. Mm-hmm. So, when he, he was a teen, he runs across another guy. His last name is Lewinsky. Isn't that so mobster? Yeah. Lewinsky. I just picture like this badass fucking New York accent. Makes it ten times cooler. Uh -huh. So these two decide, dude, you're bitching. I'm bitching. We're both bad. Let's fucking start a gang. Just me and you, bro. Just me and you. So we did. We did. And they these fools were so clever with names back in the day. We'll get into it. They're clever with their names. They're very blunt about it. Yeah. So, his, the gang was Bugs and Myers. Oh. Bam. That was his gang. 
Put it on a card. Huh. Yep. But I thought you said he didn't like being called Bugsy. People don't want to know that because we said that in the last episode when we recorded it before. Yeah. So we're doing it for the first time again, Jean. Remember? I know. The people don't know this. Okay. So. <laughs> and they started... And they started doing robberies, gambling on the side of the streets, like you see on the movies. Mm -hmm. The dice? Yeah. Yep. And good old-fashioned murder, because he was a hitman. Well, they were hitmen. They can't just blame it on one person. It's not fair. Partners. Yeah. In crime. And forever. So, then, these two dudes are getting known. The main gangsters, like the true gangsters. Mm, hearing about these guys. They're hearing about these two little youngsters that are fucking doing all right, causing mayhem and discontent. Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, let me get a feel from y'all. You guys might be useful. You guys are fucking ruthless. You're young. You do what you're told. Yeah. I like it. And they <clears> wanted <throat> to be a part of the mob. Like the mob was the final destination. Like mm -hmm. to be in a family, to be known as a family in mm -hmm. the family. Have that protection too, yeah. probably. And I gotta say, dude, okay, <coughs> growing up, I've always, like, always felt like New York was my place. Yeah. Even though there was some times that I felt like I was gonna be, like, I'd go there and I'd be, like, on the episode of, like, Law and Order SVU, right? And they're like, this little girl from Idaho came to New York and was dumb, stupid, got murdered in a dirty alleyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, yep. Two dreams fulfilled. Ching ching. But I was like fucking five. And I'm like, you know what? I wanna live in New York. Like I meant to be in New York. I Who wanna live first? I wanna live above a pizzeria, a yeah. Chinese restaurant, you know, I wanna fucking live it all. Experience it all. And I always fucking wanted to be a mobster's wife. I'm not even kidding you. So my favorite movie, which we will discuss later on, because like I said, amazing. It's Goodfellas. Yeah. Okay. It's made in the 90s. It's when I was born. Mm -hmm. How old were you? 10. Did old you ever watch years. Goodfellas? Oh, yeah. Robert De Niro. When, how old were you when you watched Goodfellas for the first time? Oh, bitch, I can't remember that kind of stuff. What you huh. talking about? Huh. <laughs> well, I was like, <laughs> wait, here, give me, give me, 90s is a whole decade. I don't know. Oh, 1990. 90. So, yeah, it was yeah. the year I was born. So 10. So absolutely not. I had to watch that movie later when I was older. But that was my household. So, Dude, I remember like watching my, like the original like My Bloody Valentine as a young kid. Uh-huh. Like, I don't know. Kevin really didn't censor that. Mm -hmm. it, like this goriness of life. Mm -hmm. And so like Jaws... Boom, saw it. It, dude, I wouldn't pee by myself. Like, the first time I watched it, I made Andrea come with me. And I'm like, no, dude, like, I gotta pee. You don't have an option. And there's gonna, I'm gonna be sitting in there, and a balloon's gonna float up, and some shit's gonna pop. No, gonna you walk fucking, away! Uh, walk away, don't you know? walk down the sink. You know. But how can you walk away, you know what I mean? It's like... Because you've seen the movie. But I still, like, you got my fascination, because in the movie, I was like, oh, that shit's, that's good movie making. Uh -huh. Happens in real life, shit, we got a problem. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, I was little. I was little. <laughs> I followed the golden key in life when I, from, like, a very young age. Mm -hmm. I would watch, like, super, super, super gruesome-ass movies, like Pet Cemetery and, like, all the, like, that's not even gruesome. But, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, My Bloody Valentine, like, all these fucking, the originals, Carrie... All of them. Mm -hmm. And then I follow it up with like Lady and the Tramp, Tarzan. Sometimes you just beast. need a little beast. You know. Yeah, like I fall asleep to Snow White singing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's fine. Yeah, my mom, we, my dad turned on the TV when he got home from work. You know, and we watched what he was watching. So it was like. That's how I fell in love with true crime TV uh -huh. shows is. Aunt Lynn would always watch um, Judging Amy. 
Oh, I love and that like, show. That's yeah, a good show. Good show. Yeah. And like old school Law and Order. Her yeah. and my mom, because growing up we were With always Chris Noth and yeah, yep. And growing up, we always lived next door to each other. We were uh -huh. like two combined fucking nonsense crazy families. Uh -huh. Strength in numbers, though. Oh, for sure. Know? Look at where oh, we for are sure. today. So oh, yeah. Good. Like, yeah. we're crazy. Yeah. We're, we could, be, we could be our own little mob. <laughs> but anyway, so, like, we lived next door to each other. So my mom and her two sisters are sitting there watching Law & Order, judging Amy. Good old-fashioned throwing some ER, some crazy romantic love. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. But, like, that's where I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, dude, like old school Law and Order changed my life, and then Special Victims Unit came out, and I was like, yep, dun 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 dun. That was like my fucking theme song to life. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> you guys have to know where I come from, you know what I mean? Like, how the hell are you gonna understand the show if you don't know That's that true. I know yeah. what I know? And I was like, literally, a little fucking kid, and these were like my favorite things. Like, they ask you in school, they're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And everybody's like, doctor, vet veterinarian i'm gonna be a mermaid i'm like i'm gonna be a mobster's wife and a drug lord mic drop boom call my mom you know what i mean like i need help <laughs> mom something oh, might no. have gone wrong because this little girl is in love with fucking al pacino <laughs> someone call her mother and i did dude i tell my teachers all the time i'm like ah oh, i'm gonna be you feel you remember you have two right yeah dude yeah. i'm scared okay okay <laughs> i'm scared she's just gonna giggle you right. Call her crying. So anyway, back to him. So yeah, they were doing robberies, murder, and it for their gang. Mm -hmm. And then they run into an actual mobster, Arnold Rothstein. And they started making bank, dude. Rothstein? Yeah, they started making bank, rolling in the money. Fucking running bootlegger liquor. Because mm -hmm. this was back in the Prohibition days. Mm -hmm. So that was like probably one of the greatest hustles known to the mob. Dude, is liquor. Yeah. I think anybody, really, from back in the day, yeah. if you had a liquor side business, you were pretty bitchin', at least to your small village of 50. Yeah. You know what I mean? You were pretty cool. Anyway, so yeah, they did that all up and down the East Coast. People would say that he was a one-man army and crazy as a bed bug, but they hated going... I don't even know what crazy as a bed bug means. I'm pretty sure it just means crazy. Mm -hmm. But why the bug? Is it like a cockroach <laughs> thing where it just like don't die? Well, bed bugs are, yeah, there's a whole process to get rid of those oh. peppers. God. Oh, okay. Well, that's what they said. But, like, dude, mobsters just, just blows me away. Just blows me away. Well, just have the balls to go up to somebody and... Well, yeah, he was like, you're going to pay me to protect you. Yeah. And he was known for like not fucking around. Uh huh. Like people said they hated going with him. Like if they were told to go rough house someone or whatever, he wouldn't play around. Like he'd just walk in there and shoot you. And he'd be like, all right, boys, we're obviously getting off early. This is done. Let's wrap this up. Toss this guy on the creek bed. Let's go. Huh. On delay. Let's go. So yeah, he just doesn't, <laughs> he didn't have the time for you. Like, he was just like, ugh, why beat him up? Let's just kill him. Yeah. <laughs> what? Done and done, son. Well, then you, they don't get the money. Or whatever. Well, yeah, because then they just take everything you have then and there. No, well, I guess You so. know what I mean? Yeah. Now I just, hopefully I make more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Probably start, like, some type of mafia war or whatever. But these are also people that if you go and borrow the money from the mob and then you don't pay the mob, what the fuck you think's going to happen to you? Yeah. You know... You didn't just stumble across the mob in the yellow pages under loans. You know what I mean? You know <laughs> some not shady money from your dad. Yeah, you grandpa. already know some yeah. shady, shady ass people. I don't think I'd be late with the payment. No, but no, you're already a part of the underground dude. If you're asking these people, from the yeah. Mob, so. so then you're gonna be surprised when you're like, oh shit, <coughs> they got mad I didn't pay them. <laughs> oh no, no, like duh. You didn't see that Duh. coming? So yeah, he'd just walk in and be like, well, you're dumb. You're late on your payment, obviously. Now you're dead. Yeah. So we'll take your name off the books. What a sweet guy. Anywho. So he, picture this. Gangster voice. He threatens anyone who calls him Bugsy, okay? And this is what is famous, like, 
when people were like, hey, Bugsy, this is what he would say. I'm not going to try to do it because obviously you guys just heard this bitch isn't good at fucking coming up with some You got to practice your New York accent. Oh, see, you're pretty good. No. Anyway, <laughs> he would say, I quote, my friends call me Ben. Strangers call me Mr. Siegel. People I don't like, they call me Bugsy, but not to my face. Drop the mic. And then I'm pretty sure he left people there with that stupid ass look on their face. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Oh, I'm lucky I survived. Mm -hmm. Like, huh. Because then the people would hear. And I watched a documentary about him. And I did a bunch of reading. But I watched the good old History Channel. And they were like, it was, this was made, mind you, back sometime. Because people who were there the day Bugsy was murdered were in it. And, like, other mobsters were in it. Mm -hmm. And, like, people who knew him were obviously alive and able to speak. So it wasn't that old because I really don't know if anybody from his era, R.I.P., you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So be around. Maybe wrong. I don't know how long motherfuckers live for. I ain't trying to guess. But if you are, Hello. Nice to meet you. Now I feel weird. <laughs> but he did allow some nicknames. Uh-huh. He loved it when the bitches. Oh, dear. He was he was known for the bitches. Yeah. Girls just He's be flocking. Scared. Yeah, because, like, they had the they same dream I had. That money, yeah. Yeah, they had the same dream I had, and they're like, I want a fur coat. Like, <laughs> give me a fur coat. Sorry. Let's say it's not real. Wink, wink. You don't know what I'm doing. Mind your business. But like a fur, quote unquote, fake real coat, whatever I want, <laughs> with the cute little head. The father. Yeah. yeah. Like straight old school. Yeah. Give me the long cigarette stick oh, thingy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh. The little fucking I hand think it's thingy. called a muff. A muff. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Get my muff. I can double check that, but. <laughs> no, let's just say it is. We'll just fucking put it out there. It is. <laughs> but yeah, so people would call him that, but he would allow. Did I tell you what their? Did I tell you what the names were? The first time we tried. Okay, yeah. yeah. So they call him Baby Blue Eyes or Mister Bedroom Eyes. So he must have had pretty eyes. Yeah, yeah. I guess Bedroom Eyes. Yeah. yeah, I guess they'd be out at the club, you know, mm -hmm. jazzing it up. I don't even know if that was around then. I don't know what the fuck they did. Mm -hmm. In the movies, they just eat. <laughs> That's why I was like, yeah, son of a fuck, girl up. <laughs> but you see the Sopranos. Oh my god, yes. Well, they do other things. I did. Back when HBO was like part of your fucking package and you have to pay a fortune. Yeah. You know, good yeah. old days. Bastards. Just go without the HBO. Yeah. So this whole time, even though they call him Mr. Bedroom Eyes, he's in love. Quote, unquote, love. With the love of his life, Esther. Esther. Who's Esther? That's his high school sweetheart. Oh. The love of his life. That he cheated on before well, they even got married. Did you see her? I Not mean, that 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 just looks don't matter. Don't matter. She had a killer either, fucking but... personality. We're sure of it. Like, I'm pretty sure she was super funny. <laughs> I don't know if she was or not. We're just going to say she wasn't because that sounds like the truth. She, well, that's she probably, doesn't. That's probably the thing to do once you're. She doesn't look like a her. nonsense type of lady. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is, this is Esther. Let me show you Esther. I just like saying her name. So this right here is Esther. Yeah. With the side curl. She got like the, ooh, ooh, what's um Popeye's fucking. Olive oil. Olive oil. Bam. She. Exactly like olive oil. Okay, dude, she has the red dress with it's the little pattern classic. thingy with yeah. the curls on the side. It's that era look. And I think she has like crochet needles in her hand, maybe knives, ice picks. We're going <laughs> to lie and say it's a knife because that's bitching. Probably. Oh, and this picture is when she's been talking to the police. So it's probably not knives. We'll go with crochet. She probably still kill a fool. So it's fine. Just kidding. She was not your typical mobster wife. Mm -hmm. Like, she wasn't about it. She was like, no, dude, I make pies. I'm cute. Keep your stuff over here. Like, I dust. Mm -hmm. I'll love you forever. Just don't be a douchebag. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they get married. 
in January 28th. This is 1929, okay? He's mm -hmm. 23. We must start paying attention to his age. 23. Very important. Yes. 23 years old. One year later, they all decided they meet up. And they're like, hey, guys, you know what? New York is missing. And the other mobsters are like, what? And they're like, Murder, Inc. My... Like, bam, papers on the table. Uh -huh. And they're and all the other mobsters were like, Murder, Inc., you're a genius. Put it in the yellow pages. They didn't. But, like... <laughs> News travels fast. What a legit name, first of all. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think there's any question, like, what they do. You know what I mean? So you would contact these people... For murder. For murder. Like, don't call me because your pipes are leaking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm killing people. Yeah. Like, I'm just out here whacking you off. Mm -hmm. I love that term, too. I'm just gonna whack you off. Because mm -hmm. nowadays people would just giggle. Ways. Like, you'd giggle before you die. You'd be like, oh, tee -hee, <laughs> Bow. Raise your hand if you giggle. Yeah, if you just giggled, you know you're true. Because I... <laughs> I couldn't not giggle. So yeah, you would get paid salary when you worked at Murder Inc. Mm -hmm. You would. They're like, ah. Well, if you treat your employees right, man, they will do anything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anything. I'm gonna assume they gave away free turkeys for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put that out there. Yeah. Probably. Christmas. These people the are kids. dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they did it. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure they had, like, big Christmas parties. Everybody got a little white envelope from Uncle Sal. Uh -huh. Uncle Sal was just throwing away money like he didn't care. Until later on he became an alcoholic. Was drunk. You know what I mean? So Poor did Murder, story. Inc. pay taxes? You know what I'm saying? Was that, like, is it um, a... Or is I don't know if they were, like, branded. Like, it was, like, Murder, you know, Inc. TM. Like right. I, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure reputation. it was just, like, Mob Street ways. Yeah. And they were just, like, a governor. We'll give you this. You give us that. We're going to bury some people under the sidewalk on Broadway. Be all right. <laughs> and they were like, for sure. You pay me, I pay you. Forget about it. Uh -huh. And look the other way. Yeah. Back when the world was genuine. You know what I mean? This is the day where you had to stick to your <coughs> word because your word was your word. Yeah. You know. you man. messed around with your word. Yeah. You end up shot. And that's the one thing about him is, like, I see where he would go in there and kill you because you borrowed money from the mob. What the fuck you think's going to happen to you? You're going to get your legs broken once, right? That's late payment number one. That's a yellow slip from the power office. Yeah. Number one payment, breaking your legs. Still, go get a job. Make my money. Yeah, I need it by yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, something. you have till Wednesday at 2. Uh -huh. It's Monday at midnight. You're down some time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is back when it was genuine. And you had to work or else you got shot. So by the time he got involved, you've already done missed one payment, two payments, three payments. He's not the first guy you saw. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They finally were like, a hey, Bugsy. <laughs> this dude ain't paying me nada. Go take care of this. Or this guy <coughs> called this guy's mom fat. Hurt his feelings. We protect him. Go kill the bully. Mm -hmm. And he was known for being a really good guy. People would say he was a really swell fella. Yeah. Just, super nice. yeah. Just don't cross him. We'll get on to his, uh, his nice, his, what he viewed as nice, I guess. What people were like, that's the one thing we can say he was great about. And I feel like when people were like, hey, tell me about him. People were like, well, um. Yeah. Great guy. You say he committed hundreds of murders? Oh no. Still super sweet fella. <laughs> like <laughs> they didn't want to say anything bad. Even after he died. Oh, yeah. We'll we'll get to that. So after prohibition ends in nineteen thirty-three, in nineteen thirty-six, three years later, the mob in New York was like, hey. You are a little crazy. We love it, though. Like, don't lose the enthusiasm. Like, you're great. 
but you need to leave New York because mm-hmm. like maybe you got wrapped up into something. Maybe because they were like, "Damn, son." Mm-hmm. Damn. So like, you need to go to New- you need to go to California, and you need to show California how we do what we do, mm-hmm. and when we do what we do. Show them the familia. Because mm-hmm. he was around when they first created the books and like the laws and. This is how we act. This is how we condone ourselves. He was around during the beginning. Yeah. Like, not the beginning beginning, but the beginning. You know what I mean? hmm Obviously. Well, and he made a name for himself. Obviously. He earned it. You know? Yeah. He really did. So, um... <clears throat> in New York, he was mainly a hitman. He was the quote-unquote... The muscle. Uh-huh. <laughs> and when he died, they said he was like... 5'10", 5'11", so he's pretty big. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, he's tall. Not, I mean, it's not, like, gigantic, but, I mean, you guys said he's a pretty good, good-sized guy. So, he was part of the Luciano family, which then changed the Genovese family when they took it over, when the Genovese family took it over in 1957. So, Bugsy was the first gangster to ever make the front page. Oh. And be like... This guy is bad news. He's no good. Yeah. He's done bad deeds. Because the guy he killed did have like a brother that was like politically something. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. He might have been like a copper. I don't know. He was something. Somebody gave a shit about the guy's murder. Murder. But um, yeah. So... And he was one of the first gangsters to envision the New York, I mean, the Las Vegas Strip. Oh. Like, he went out there and he was like, hey, this dry land. Never been there. Pre-talking shit. Just so everybody knows, I'm just freely talking shit. Well, we gotta get you to Vegas because it's the middle of the nowhere. And... Yeah, see, I picture it that way. I picture the tumbleweeds and, like, the whistle in the background. Well, back in the day. You no, know what it's, I mean? no, it's not too The bad. howling of the coyote. Uh-huh. The whisper of the moon. You know what I mean? I feel it. I feel like this is what we were dealing with. Probably weren't. Who knows? But he goes out there and he's like, hey, this is going to be the greatest thing. Bright light. I picture like a musical breaking out too, you know what I mean? Like he sees me, he's like, Donna, Anna. And like buildings pop Everybody's up. Everybody's going to come Donna. to this thing. Yeah, like we're going to make yeah. this thing bitch. Which if any of you have had to go to Las Vegas and drive through it and survived. No, so he would go back and forth between um, Vegas and California mm-hmm. because I guess it's not a far Was distance. he based at LA or where in Cali was he? Hollywood. Hollywood, all right. Yeah, that's five hours. Hollywood! Back and he was known for before. hanging out with, like, all the big times back in, like, the 1936 days, like, Frank Sinatra and, like, all those bad people. You Badass people. I don't say bad in, like, a bad way. I'm not like, ooh, they're bad. Like, mm-hmm. ooh, naughty, naughty. I'm like, bad. Like, I bitching. Yeah. I am what I am, people. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't judge me. It was the golden age. Only God can judge me. <laughs> None of you can. So, <clears throat> he got arrested in 1939. He was arrested for the murder of Big Greeny. Oh. Or, if you want to go lame and call him by his mom's name, given to him, Harry. Who looks like a sweet fella. I think I think I got his, I think I got his picture amongst all of Bugsy's here. Benjamin. 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 I wonder if it's like how they used to say, oh, I don't have it. Anyway. Damn him. But yeah, he supposedly, we can't say he did it, uh-huh. committed the murder. He was arrested for yes. it. Yes. Okay. And when he was in quote unquote jail, yeah. he made people think that they were going crazy because he'd be seen at the barbershop. Yeah. He'd be seen at the restaurants. But he was in... Jail. Like, county or prison? I don't Probably know. Probably county. If he Probably, was like... Going do they... Does it really matter back then? You know what I mean? Like, jail, prison. I, I don't know. I just picture... Well, and, like, I guess Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I'm, let's just say... Let's just say there was a table, a god, 
and some jail sales. Yeah. And he was down there and they would let him leave because I get this dude was just beloved. Everybody's like, he really is like the sweetest guy. He's super nice. Super, super, super nice. So they loved him. So he almost had his own brother-in-law killed because his own brother-in-law was like, hey, guys, I know what happened. Mm -hmm. Why did he want to ride his brother-in-law out there? Especially if he knows his reputation, you know. Conscience, bro. Oh, I guess. Some people didn't. got it. Some people don't. Yeah. His brother-in-law just was one of those people that are like, I really can't forget that I just saw you fucking kill a dude. <laughs> like, I'm having a hard time adjusting to this lifestyle. I can see that. Yeah. I'm glad I've not ever been in that situation, but. Oh, and then he actually did kill him. Supposedly. 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 Had the brother-in-law supposedly pass away. It looked like a, a suicide. Oh. A suicide of sorts. People in Bugsy's life were known to commit suicide by jumping off of balconies. Oh. That's terrifying. He had a weird, weird, weird things happened around this guy that could never be proven or pointed back to him. Just happened. But he just so happened to be there and when you would walk by him you'd pee a little bit and that was just like normal for everybody <laughs> back then even she didn't see you like if he walked by you and didn't kill you you're like oh damn Woo! <laughs> today's a good day it's a good day so he got 30 grand back from the da oh so when i say he got it back he obviously didn't get committed of this everybody went to court okay his new york big top friends they mm -hmm. all went to court and they were like this guy this guy, greatest guy ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, I trust him with my life. So everybody went to bat for him. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was like, there's just no way. There's just not a chance. And because, so back in New York, when they had the gang, someone tried to assassinate him by dropping, this is like the, such a badass story. So someone tried to drop a bomb down the chimney. Oh. Okay. It goes off. Uh -huh. He is injured. They take him to the hospital. While he's at the hospital, they're guarding his room, whatever have yeah. you. He gets out. He goes out of the hospital. He goes and kills the guy who drops the bomb down the chimney, goes back to the hospital. And he's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? I've been at the hospital. Someone tried to kill me. How did he know? He's a mobster. <laughs> like... I'm sure someone told someone who told someone who told someone who told Fat Joe who was underneath him who told yeah. him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's a rat in every pile. Yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere there's a dirty down player in your little crusade of life. Great. No matter what. Sorry, people. What's the facts? Trust no one. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. It's probably a problem. I probably should talk to someone. <laughs> but then again, I've lived this long. Yeah. And I'm pretty... Here we are. Yeah. Here so, we are. obviously, I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. Duh. Anyway. So, he was acquitted in 1942. At this time, he's 35 years old. Okay? Okay. 35. In 1941, he moved to Vegas... Kind of permanently, but not permanently. Because his family was back in California. And they also traveled back to New York. And fucking... They do the loop-de-loo around life. Because he was just balling. Yeah. Obviously. So, he meets the guy who's opening the Flamingo Hotel. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, check it out. I can go to the mob and be like, hey... Give me this money. As an investment. As an investment. I'm going to spruce up this fucking hotel. It's going to be bitching. Going to be amazing. Only going to cost you like a million bucks. And so the mob's like, hey, yeah, for sure. Why not? So they do it. And then he goes back to him and he's like, yeah, well, I want the spinny chairs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like my chair has got to be spinny. I want the sparkly table. I want this and I want that. So I'm going to need a couple other mail. So he was... Building Vegas. 
The Flamingo yeah. Hotel is where yeah. he started. Yes. And this was supposed to be the Mecca of all Meccas. Mm -hmm. Like, this is where it was supposed to start. And so, he pushes that guy eventually out of the way completely. And he's like, hey, check it out. You're kind of just in my way. I don't really give a fuck. Oh, that guy didn't fall out of the window? No, he didn't. Wink, wink. He did not. He <laughs> did not. He got paid to nicely and politely, very sweetly and kindly go Move the fuck away. To... Move home. <laughs> well, he was still there. He was still chilling, but he was just like, yeah, you do what you do. You pay me. You take it over. I'll become, you're my under guy. Yeah. I'll just sit around, smoke cigars, drink you. whiskey, fuck with bitches. You do you. And I'm, I don't mean bitches in like a mean derogatory way. It's just how I talk. I love everybody and women especially. Like bitches are bitches, but whatever. Cry she if you want to. In a good way. Yeah, cry yeah. if you want to. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, so he becomes millions, dude, millions of dollars to the debt. And the mob back in New York is like, WTF, bro? Yeah. Like, you had your shit together, my friend. What? Happened. Well, they gotta give them a minute. Where's well, about Vegas? Well, well, well. So you had run? This is what happened to Bugsy, Mr. Benjamin, Mr. Blue Eyes. He ran into this hoe. Let me show you this hoe. She a hoe. She looks very pretty, and I'm gonna tell you about her too because she's bitching. But she's a homewrecker. Yeah. This right here. Yeah. Mmm. Right there. That's Virginia Heel. Mm -hmm. In 1945, he runs into her. And she has been put into the mob kind of as like a spy. Kind of. She'd go in between like the Luciano family and then she knew Al Capone's cousin. And like she got to him because they were like, you need to go watch this guy and figure out what the fuck Where's our money going? This dude's going on. So whatever. She's like, okay, I'll go. And then it's like, they ran into each other way before in New York. And they had a one night stand many, many years ago. Oh. Which they never spoke of again. Yeah. They left the hotel and they were like, okay, it is what it is. One night stand. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. And so they go and it's over with or whatever. And then they run into each other again and they pass each other. And she's like, is that you? Baby blue eyes. Who knows what she called him? I guess she called him Benny, which is super cute, like all mobster. Because she was also from, like, well, she wasn't from Chicago, but she moved to Chicago. She was born. I don't know if I wrote it down. I should have written it down. But I don't think I did. <coughs> so they start up this end all to be all gangster mobster affairs. Mm -hmm. Like, Bonnie and Clyde who? Mm -hmm. Like, we ain't even at Bonnie and Clyde. Anyway, so they were called the king and queen of the underground. She was a boss, dude. She had a fucking mouth like a, tra a fucking truck driver. Anybody yeah. who met her was like, oh, you better watch out for Virginia. Yeah. Virginia, yell at you. She's crazy. <laughs> so, and to show how crazy she was, one of her friends who was still alive during this the making of this documentary was like let me tell you a story about Virginia one day Bugsy's at the end of the bar uh -huh. and he's talking to a blonde uh -huh. she watches him conversation goes on too long uh -huh. they're at the other end of the bar she says she picks up glasses and she threw a glass that right went right in between Bugsy and this blonde the blonde left yeah. never to come back again she never, ever messed around again. And it was known that she was like, yeah, she may have been the side bitch, but she's the side bitch. And she's so she the only. One, so that probably got his attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and he knew she was crazy. Like, they used to conduct mob meetings naked in bed. Oh. Like, he'd, like, do his mafia shit. And he's like, all right, don't look over here. Mm -hmm. Sitting in bed, smoking cigars and cigarettes, naked, naked. So, yeah, and he would, one of the other things that he was known for, because he is such a gentleman, is if a cigarette cart girl passed a table and there was a guy and a girl, 
and the girl paid for her own cigarettes, he'd get pissed. And he's like, what kind of disrespectful fool are you? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't treat a lady that yeah, way. Yeah, your lady doesn't be treated that way. Like, you cheap ass. So mm -hmm. he'd be like, well, if your man's not going to be a man, I'll be a man. I'll buy your cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I'll give them to you. And so he was just known for being a good old sweetheart to people. And really, he was. People said that you wouldn't see, quote unquote, Bugsy, Mr. Crazy Guy. Mm hmm if you didn't bring it out in it. You know what I mean? Like, if you didn't do nothing, he was kosher. He lived, he was me and you. You know what I mean? He was good. Yeah. Yeah. And so, he got Virginia a hill, a house up the street from his fucking wife's house. Because he's like, hey, the commute ain't about it. So, you live up here. Take me five, ten minutes to get home to my wife and my kids. What the, what the yeah. this say? Oh, well, <laughs> we'll out. find out. And uh, so, remind you, they, he started it as a fair in 1945. Mm -hmm. 1946. <laughs> she picked up on it. Huh? She was like, hey, douche, no more of this. You're not going to make a fool of me. Yeah. Everybody knows. You don't hide it anymore. You two are being, your pictures are in the paper together. Because back in the day, mobsters were the big, they were the Kim Kardashians of the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially in Hollywood. And she was, like, a, gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. She fucking didn't end up being gorgeous when she died, but I just, like, caught up. Karma's a fucking bitch. Because, I'll show you. She's not very nice. <laughs> well, she might. Oh, she ain't nice. No, hell no, she ain't nice. But she just doesn't stay that pretty forever. Yeah. Karma, well, gravity's gonna get all of us. Karma eats you. Yeah. So his wife was like, hey, kick rocks. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out of here. Well, good for her. Yeah. But, so she kicked him out or did yeah. beat her up? Nope. She mm -hmm. kicked him out. She's like, you pay me $600 a, di a month. Get the hell out of here. Um. So yeah. How old were his girls? They're, it doesn't say. It doesn't say exactly how old they were, but you can do the math on your own if you want. <laughs> Remember, she was born in 1931. So, bam. 1931 to... What the fuck did I say? 1946. That's your own business. Okay. Calculate. Yeah, it's like 15, 16. Before. Yeah. Something like that. They were teenagers mm -hmm. because they mainly kept going back to New York because that's where her family was from. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, him and his side chick ran the underworld, dude. They were just... Killing it. <laughs> it's fucked up as it is to say. Like, she was as crazy as him. Mm -hmm. So, um, he gets the mob all in a bad mood. And then the mob was like, hey. Did he, so he didn't make any payments? Well, he was. Okay. And he was making payments. But just not enough. And the mob was like, well, you say that you're going to make all this money or whatever. But what Bugsy didn't realize is that the people of Nevada were like, oh my God, yeah, dude, we'll come gamble for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. But we're not going to stay here. Like, we live here. Yeah. Why stay here? Yeah. So his hotel really wasn't doing as good as he thought because people weren't staying. So he needed to get the word out. They were coming and gambling, just not staying. Mm -hmm. So the mob was like, uh, we got a problem. You're million, like, we gave you millions. Millions. I'm going to need some of that back. Yeah. And if they're anything like my fucking siblings, they ain't going to let it go. You know what I mean? Like, they're just You're not going to forget some shit. Time. Yeah. Okay. Bastards. <laughs> so, in June, him and his old lady get in a fight. And she's like, you know what, Bugsy? Done with ya. Going to New I'm going to Europe. You be gone when I get back. Yeah. Get your shit up out of my house. You may have bought this house. It was good old Virginia. But it was mine. Mm hmm And if you ain't out of my house, God rest your soul when I get back. Peace. So she goes. Mm hmm And then, June 20th rolls around. And that day was like any other day. <coughs> 
He went out to a fancy restaurant. He ate breakfast. He hung out with his <clears throat> his posse, his brothers. Yeah. The people he was always with. They had a really good day. They were all chilling, having a gay old time. And he was sitting on the her house, sitting on her couch in Beverly Hills, California. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's chilling. He's sitting there with Al Smiley is on the couch next to him. That's one of his under people that were underneath him. Oh, that, he, okay. that was like his main man, his right man. So him and Al are sitting there and Bugsy's reading the LA Times. Bugsy goes to flip the page. Next thing they know, nine shots have been fired through the window from outside. Bugsy gets, I'm going to post his fucking morgue pictures too because they're amazing. Mm. I'll put the warning, but really, I don't remember. If you don't want to see he it. Gets shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, nine shots, two in the fucking head. His oh. fucking left eyeball, I think it was, was found across the, like, across the um, living room floor. Like, on the other side of the room was his left eyeball. Wow. And he died from brain injury. Wasn't even, like, the shot, like. It was just his brain. But, um, no one's ever, ever been charged with his murder. It's still an unsolved murder till this very day. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's an epic cold case. He was just shot through the window. They have no idea. No idea. And <laughs> so Virginia goes home, right? And she's like, Bugsy was shot on my couch. That's she, tragic. Mm -hmm. But what's even more tragic, there's a bullet hole in my vase. There's a bullet hole in my grand piano. And the motherfucker ruined my painting. Like, that is the real tragedy here, people. That's what she was saying? Yeah. She's like, well, my shit got fucked up. Why does no one care that my grand piano Has got a shot? What's you like, what did my piano ever do? Why did it need to get shot? Like, she was like, why did you have such bad aim? Maybe they used the Tommy gun or something. And you got to think about the person that. sitting outside that window. Either that man had balls of steel. Yeah. And it was crazier than him, which is super scary to think about if this dude was, like, psychotic and was just, like, out to kill people. Especially if his entourage is around, because shouldn't yeah. somebody kind of be looking out? Or They were mid-conversation, dude. Mid-newspaper mm -hmm. flip. Like... Oh yeah, having a good time. Pop, pop, pop. Silencer. Dude never even knew what the fuck happened. He was just yeah. like, oh shit, Bugsy's eyeball clear over the Oh, Bugsy's dead. Like he had like a melt, like you know what I mean? He was yeah. like, oh no, this is not good. So oh, he survived. no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Good. The Asian cook was there, mm -hmm. and I guess that's important. I don't know why, because they never said why. Oh. <laughs> just that he was there. His homie and that dude's old lady was there in the house. Oh. Mm. And Bugsy got shot. And then, yeah. So his picture, his body, his toe tag was on the front of the newspaper back in Nevada, New York and stuff. It was like big news. Big deal. Big deal. That they were like, oh shit. Bugsy got whacked. <laughs> whacked. Taken out. Anyway, so then check this shady shit out. His quote unquote associates. Walk into the flamingo the day after he dies. Yeah. And they're like, this is now mine. See, he's bowed down. Wow. Like, they are the ones who inform the flamingo that, like... I'm the new boss. I'm the boss. Things are going to change around here. Sit down. We're going to show you how we really do it. Without my side bitch getting to be a distraction. Because I'm sorry. I, I'm going to say the word. The pussy? Is that, is that like a vulgar word? That's okay. Okay. But like, pussy gets dudes tripped up. <coughs> yeah. They should do some stupid shit. Yes, it does. You think with the wrong... Yeah. Wrong one, boy. Mm-hmm. But... So they just walked in there, took over. Yeah. So, like I'm saying, everybody knew but Bugsy. I would even go as far as saying that Mr. Al Smiley knew that he was going to get whacked off. You know what I mean? Like, maybe he didn't. I don't know. But the mob was just like, you are just making us look ridiculous. 
your money's not going anywhere. You got to go. You got to go. So just a fun little side note. Um, he was childhood friends with good old Al Capone. Was he really? Yes. Wow. Al Capone was seven years older than him. And when Capone went on the run for murder, he went to Bugsy's auntie's house. Oh, right on. Yeah. And she was like, of course, Al. Come on You can in. stay. Like, you're Al fucking Capone. Like, okay, so my little sister, like I said, Andrea lives in New York. In New York. God, I wish. In California. That's when I go away. there, yeah, when I go there, one of my all time things that we must do is go to Alcatraz. Because, like, it has to fucking happen. Alcatraz is in San Francisco. Mm hmm. Yeah. To Gotta make go. Make reservations. And, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I don't yeah care. absolutely. Fun times. It's haunted, too. Sure. Yeah. What? We'll do ghost stories. <laughs> for sure. We'll talk about ghost stories because. There's some shit in Idaho that people think is haunted, so we'll go. We'll get into that. <clears throat> but um, so his funeral was kind of sad. Was it? Yeah. Did his wife go? His ex-wife. Sure. Yeah. Five people went. His ex-wife, his daughters, his brother, and his favorite sister. Wow. The funeral lasted five minutes. Uh uh. It was open, it was done and over before the um, funeral parlor even opened for the day. <laughs> and his, casti his casket cost $5,000 because it was silver plated. Oh, good. <laughs> and he is buried in, New in Hollywood at, hold on, I'll tell you exactly what cemetery. It is, because it's the one with the wall. Like the wall of the dead people. Hollywood Forever Sarah Cemetery in Los Angeles, California. Huh. So it's like his name's on the wall and like the plaque and shit. <coughs> so that's kind of cool. Definitely a stop to see when I go to see my sister. Sure. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. So, once again, we got to go back to why does Sean Marie love gangster movies? Old school gangsters. And I swear if I hear any shit on how, like, new school gangsters is what it's about, we're not friends. Like, old school mob, suit and tie, let me give you my fucking hanky. Yeah. Mobsters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the Godfather, Al Capone himself, John Gotti. Even, John, even though John Gotti turned into a rat, still, Sammy the Bull. Like... Oh my god, just amazing. Like, yeah. it was like, literally, I was obsessed. They were my fir first obsession before Killers. Mm -hmm. Like, they got me into the Killers. Mafia. Yeah, the Mafia. Yeah. And it started out with Scarface. Mm-hmm. Good show. Amazing. Well, it didn't start out, because I watched Goodfellas first, uh -huh. like I said. And then I was like, okay, I love, I love it. I love it. And, like, my fam I'm not going to say my family was fucked up. It was just a fucked up situation. So, like, watching that family dynamic, I'm like, oh, for sure, that's solid love. That could be different. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's forever love. You know what I mean? And so I was like, I want it. And then I watched Scarface. And then I'm like, oh, my God. Amazing. <laughs> this is the greatest thing I've ever watched. I'm going to be a drug lord. So that was, like, my fall into it. And then, of course, American <laughs> Gangster came out in 2007. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing movie. And then I got Godfather. But Godfather, hey, 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 it's an amazing hey, movie, bro. It's an amazing through. movie. All... Are they, though? <laughs> sure. Of course. People think. Jean's looking at me serious, so. Yes. You're giving her the mom look. Very, very good. All three movies were equally amazing. Sure. <laughs> but, like, do the mob just... When Sammy the Bull talks about it, it's exactly how you think. Like, when, okay, so my little brother comes home and he's like, hey, dude, today I watched the podcast about Sammy the Bull. Have you seen it? And I'm like, oh my god, no. What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, 
he finally broke his silence because he wrote the book. He uh-huh. wrote a book and everything else. And so I'm like, okay, well, I got to watch it. So I cast it to the TV. Me and my baby are sitting there watching it. She's all about it. She's like, Sammy, because I teach her because I'm that type of mom. I'm like, that's Sammy the Bull. So she's like, Sammy. I'm like, yeah. So anyway, we're watching it. He comes up. He watches it with me. Well, halfway. And then, like, you just, and I recommend watching it. It's amazing to learn that, like, different opinions. Like, okay, so I, before I learned about what John Gotti did at the end of being John Gotti, Mm -hmm. he was one of my faves. Mm Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, John Gotti. And then I watched Growing Up Gotti on yeah. TV. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, the first, like, Kardashians. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And I watched that, and I'm like, oh, my God, his daughter's still living this mob life. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's amazing. Uh-huh. And then you learn what he did. And you're like, oh, snitches get stitches. Mm-hmm. Fucker. And, like, Sammy the Bull was like, I didn't even rat on nobody until I read the paperwork that John Gotti did. And, like, when John Gotti learned, like, when he, when Sammy learned that John Gotti ratted him out and was like, hey, it's all Sammy's fault. Like, fucking, you guys not hear about this guy? Mm -hmm. He's fucking crazy. Sammy didn't prove I did it. I didn't do it. He did. But, you guys have to watch it for yourselves. But anyway, that's the story about Sammy. That's, sorry, Bugsy. Bugsy Siegel, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at it is what it is, 208, it is what it is, pod19, it is what it is at gmail.com, and we love you guys, and we're looking for sponsors, so if you guys know anybody, hit us up, next week we're going to do a fan story, so peace oh, out. Cool. Yeah, Annie, yeah. one of our fan, one of our fans from Facebook, hit us up with a story, and we're going to look okay. into it and see what's about. All right. But yeah, see you guys. Yeah, we're running out of time, so I'm talking fast. But we love you. We appreciate you. You guys are amazing. And wait for the mini. We're switching it to mini life lessons because rant sounds dumb. And I still have like a second, so I really don't know why I was talking. Yeah, Yeah. mini life lessons because I think people read the word rant and they're like, oh, fuck. I already have to hear about vision. Like, shit. And it's not a rant. It's really just my way of life and the way that I believe it should happen and it be and for all the nosy people who keep asking me to do my family's quote unquote story I will not so please we're not going to go there it's not just my story it's my whole siblings so we're not going to dive into Did it. Drop it yeah so let that go but we will get into a little bit of my personal stuff because we're going to eventually hopefully be able to go and talk to the woman center downtown and figure out all that nonsense but We'll get into that on another episode. So let us know if you want another gangster story. Because they are truly, truly my first loves. So what happened to Sammy real fast? Sammy, he did yeah. he did his time when he got out. Yeah. Okay. He's been paroled. He fucking, he's well, good for Sammy. starting his own podcast, by the way, which well, is going to be badass where yeah. he lets everything go. He does the book. He talks about John Gotti and how John Gotti was a fool. Does he call, take Colin questions? God, I hope so. You know what I mean? So, yeah, shout out to Sammy. That'd be the shit. So, Sammy the Bull, if you ever listen to this, you're amazing and I fucking love you. And you were a genius beyond your, beyond your years. And it's just amazing. So, yeah, peace out, guys. And have a good night. Thanks, guys. Bye. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.